Hey guys, this is Landon with the Command Valley bringing you a, another EDH deck tech. So I am super excited for today's deck tech. I'm doing it on one of my favorite new legendary creatures from Strixhaven. I know Strixhaven has been out for a while and I also did the upgrade guide for this commander's pre-con, but I think that people are kind of sleeping on this card and I think it's a lot stronger than I initially thought. And that is Willow Dusk Essence Seer, the face commander from the Witherbloom Witchcraft deck. Now Willow Dusk costs one of black and a green and she is a legendary creature dryad druid she is a 3-3 and she has an activated ability that costs one generic mana and tap her you choose another target creature and you put a number of plus one plus one counters on it equal to the amount of life you gained this turn or the amount of life you lost this turn whichever is greater and you can only activate this at sorcery speed now when i initially saw this i read the words gain life lost life plus one plus one counters and i kind of like checked out didn't sound super interesting to me, but the more I looked at Willow Dusk and the more that I saw other people's lists, the more inspired I became. The fact that you get as many counters as you gained or lost life, and as I started looking into all the different ways of manipulating your life total for value and then being able to make one of your creatures super huge, I thought that it actually was a lot more exciting than I initially gave it credit for. So with that, I have constructed a deck based around Willow Dusk's ability, gaining life, losing life, and making our creatures huge and my favorite sub theme of the deck is most of the creatures in the deck not all of them but a large majority of them have lifelink so we can pay a bunch of life into let's say a doom whisperer that's in our deck pay two life to surveil we can do that a bunch of times surveil through our whole library lose a ton of life you know we could pay 15 we could activate it 15 times you know losing 30 life and then we can tap our commander put you know, 25 30 plus one plus one counters on a creature with lifelink for example now we have a 30 30 creature with lifelink we can gain all of that life back immediately and if our opponents don't answer that massive life gain creature we're going to be gaining ridiculous amounts of life that we can then use to exploit for value so let's start off with just the ramp that i have in this deck we're just running all of the ramp sources that you would see in a golgari deck we've got three visits nature lore and rampant growth at the two mana slot along with golgari signet felwar stone and arcane signet and talisman of resilience so we've got our rocks and two mana spells we've also got cultivate and we are running soul ring of course and we've got secure a tribe elder and some more interesting ramp pieces that we have is the first is marwin the nurturer she's a legendary elf druid and she can and whenever another elf enters a battlefield under our control she gets a plus one plus one counter i I know this isn't an elf deck but she can tap to add green equal to her power and it just so happens that our commander is very good at putting obscene amounts of counters on things and a similar card to marwin is accomplished alchemist this is this is a newer card from strixhaven you can tap it for one mana of any color or you can add x mana of any one color where x is the amount of life you gained this turn so really similar to marwin because the life that we gain or lose we can put that many counters on Marwin, and this uh, Accomplished Alchemist is, is basically the same thing. But they're both really interesting pieces, and they're fairly budget, and they're really good in the deck. Now let's start talking about the lifelinking creatures. Now a lot of these aren't super great when you look at them, but you have to remember we're planning on putting anywhere between 5 to 10 counters on them every turn, and it really gets out of hand fast. So we've got Banehound, just a 1 black mana, lifelink, hasty 1-1. One, one. We then have Gifted Aetherborn, which is a 2 mana 2-3 two, with Death Touch and Lifelink. We've also got Nighthawk Scavenger, which is kind of a throwback to Vampire Nighthawk, very similar. It's got Flying, Death Touch, and Lifelink, and its power is equal to 1, plus the number of card types among cards in your opponent's graveyards. Honestly, it's just in here for a, being a Flying, Death Touch, Lifelinking Vampire, so that's really cool. We then have Null Priest of Oblivion. It's a 1 and a black with a kicker of 3 and a black. It has Menace and Lifelink, and when it enters a battlefield, if it was kicked, we can return target creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield. So this really does a lot for it. It has a lot of utility on a 2-mana creature. It has a Menace, which is really good evasion, especially when we're, you know, putting a bunch of counters on it. Lifelink, even better. And in the late game, if we draw it, it's not completely dead. We can just bite the 6-mana bullet and return, you know, one of our best creatures from our graveyard. It's just a really good card. 
We then have Spike Feeder, which is an interesting one. It doesn't really have lifelink. It ETBs with two plus one plus one counters on it. We can spend two generic mana to remove a plus one plus one counter from the Spike Feeder to put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. We can then remove a plus one plus one counter as a cost from it at instant speed if we wanted to, and we will gain two life. So this works really well with our commander. We can remove two plus one plus one counters on it to gain the two life. We can you know, tap our commander to put two more plus one plus one counters on it if we really wanted to. It's not really an infinite combo but it's just really cool synergy we then have valentine dean of the vein which i think is a really cool card <laughs> i almost thought about building a valentine deck but i think willow dusk i like it just a little bit more it's a legendary creature vampire warlock it has a menace and lifelink and if a non-token creature an opponent controls would die, we will exile it instead. When we do, we can pay two generic mana, and we, we will make a 1-1 black and green pest creature token with when this creature dies, we gain a life. It does have a backside, don't really care about that, don't even remember what it does. Mostly we just want Valentine. Being able to being able to exile all of our opponent's creatures for just one mana and having a menacing lifelinking creature is just a lot of value. Um, if our opponents are in any type of a graveyard deck, this will be the bane of their existence. And I alluded to I alluded to this next card earlier. We have Vampire Nighthawk. It has flying, death touch, and lifelink for three mana. We then have Vault Scourge, which costs one and a Phyrexian Black, and the Phyrexian Black can be paid with a Black Source or two life, has Flying and Lifelink, so that's just a really good card in this deck. So these are the creatures in the deck that uh, have Lifelink, or in Spike Feeder's case, can gain us a ridiculous amount of life. The next category or aspect or strategy of this deck is what I have called the Wither and Bloom. So this is all about the life manipulation, whether of ours or of our opponents. And to kick this category off, we are going to start with Essence Whenever another creature enters a battlefield, we are going to gain one life. It doesn't matter if it's ours or our opponents. We then have Doom Whisperer, which I talked about earlier in the video. It is a 5 mana 6-6 six, six flying trampling demon and a really good target for Willow Dusk to put counters on. We can pay 2 life. It has an activated ability of paying 2 life to being able to surveil 2. So that means we look at the top 2 cards of our library, we can put any of them in our graveyard or we can put them back on top of our library in any order and it's just repeatable. We can do that as many times as we have life. We then have Grey Merchant of Asphodel, which is kind of a really big finisher. Um, there are a lot of times we could just use this to kill our opponents, but when it enters the battlefield, each opponent is going to lose X life, where X is our devotion to black, and we are going to gain life equal to the life lost this way. So if we cast Grey Merchant and our devotion is, let's say, six, each of our opponents are going to lose six life, and we are, are going to gain 18 life as a result. So it kind of triples that, which is really good with our commander. The next Wither and Bloom creature in this category is Sangromancer. This is a card that I've seen a lot in a lot of different lists uh, as I've perused EDH Rec, and I really didn't think much of it until I actually was just playing the Willow Dust Preconstructed deck, and Sangromancer is an absolute unit of a card. It is a 4 mana flying 3-3 three, three vampire shaman. Whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, we can gain 3 life, and whenever an opponent discards a card, we can also gain 3 life. Yeah, I've had Sangromancer out on the table with like over 30 other creatures in play, maybe that's an exaggeration, maybe 15 to 20 other creatures, and a board wipe happens, and then you just gain a ridiculous amount of life with this Sangromancer. We then have Tivish, or Tivash, Gloom Summoner. He is a 5 mana human warlock. He is legendary, he has lifelink, which yeah, I guess I could have talked about him under the lifelink category, but he's also just really good at using the life that we've gained to put threats on the battlefield. So at the beginning of our end step, if we gained life this turn, we can pay X life, where X is the amount of life that we gain this turn. If we do, we will make an XX black demon creature token with flying. Now this is kind of the point in the video where I would just really wish that Will of Dusk's ability could be activated at instant speed. I can see why they made it only be able to be activated at sorcery speed because, well, actually, I can see the case either way. But being able to uh, turn your opponents dealing combat damage to you into like a, a really big benefit for you, I can see how people maybe wouldn't find that fun. I think that would have been super cool. <laughs> The next creature in this category is Vito, Thorn of the Dusk Rose. Whenever we gain life, Vito is going to make target opponent lose that much life. And for three, a black and a black, he has an activated ability that gives all of our creatures lifelink until the end of turn. 
The final creature in this category is Wall of Blood. For two and a black, we get a wall with a repeatable activated ability of paying one life and it's going to get plus one plus one until end of turn. So this is really, really good with our commander and any lifelinking creature in play. Let's say we've gained some life throughout the game as is to be expected with this deck. Let's say we pay 20 life to the Wall of Blood and then we can activate our commander to put 20 plus one plus one counters on one of our creatures, presumably with lifelink, and then just immediately gain it all back. That is a huge, huge value town train. Now we've gone over basically all of the creatures in the deck and what they do, and we now need to talk about ways that this deck has of generating card advantage so we can keep all those creatures in our hand. Luckily, there are a lot of options for this in our colors. Let's start off with some enchantments. So we've got Greed, which for three and a black, we get an enchantment with an activated ability of paying a black mana and paying two life to draw a card. Now this fits in really well with our strategy, paying two life and a black mana for a card and being able to put counters on a creature, super great. We then have Moldervine Reclamation, which is a little bit pricey at five mana. Whenever a creature that we control dies, we gain a life and draw a card. We then have some instants and sorcery spells to help us draw a bunch of cards. We've got Damnable Pack, X black black target player draws X cards and loses X life. The extra life synergy with our commander is really nice here. We then have Healing Technique, which isn't exactly a card draw spell, but for three and a green, we get a sorcery with the Demonstrate mechanic. So when we cast this spell, we can choose to copy it. And if we do copy it, we choose an opponent to also get a copy of it. And we get to return target card from our graveyard to our hand and gain life equal to that card's mana value. So for four mana and getting back two cards from our graveyard and gaining a bunch of life is really good, even if our opponents gets to get a card back. And then we have to exile the Healing Technique. We then have Infernal Contract, which is super cool. For three black mana, we draw four cards and lose half of our life rounded up. That is a small price to pay for four cards in this deck, especially considering everything I've mentioned earlier about putting counters on our lifelink creatures to gain back that life loss. We then have Life's Legacy, which is a sorcery that costs one and a green. As an additional cost to cast it, we have to sacrifice a creature, and we're going to draw cards equal to the sacrificed creature's power. We then have Momentous Fall, which at instant speed and for four mana, we have to sacrifice a creature and we will draw cards equal to the sacrificed creature's power and then gain life equal to its toughness. Seriously, it's like they printed cards like this just for Willow Dusk. We then have Plum the Forbidden, which is an instant and as an additional cost to cast it, we have to sacrifice one or more creatures. And when we do, we will copy the spell for each creature sacrificed this way. We will draw a card and lose a life for each copy. So this is just a really good card draw spell. We then have Pulse of Marasa, which at instant speed can return a creature or land card from a graveyard to its owner's hand, and we are going to gain six life. We then have Return of the Wild Speaker for four and a green, so five mana. At instant speed, we choose one of the two following modes. We're going to draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures that we control, or non-human creatures that we control get plus three, plus three until the end of turn. Now, we've got a couple other cards that I'd like to talk about now. The first being Inscription of Abundance. It is an instant with one and a green and a kicker of two and a green. And if we can choose one of the following modes, and if it was kicked, we can choose any number of modes instead. We can put two plus one plus one counters on target creature. Target player gains X life where X is the greatest power among creatures they control and target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. Now, the most important modes or mode, I suppose, in this card is the middle one. Target player gains X life where X is the greatest power among creatures they control and being able to put two plus one plus one counters on something is nice and instant speed fight is also really good. This card is just overall really useful in this deck. We then have a Sanguine Bond, which is an enchantment that lets us, whenever we gain life, target opponent is going to lose that much life. Basically, it's just Veto in an enchantment form. And then we have Unspeakable Symbol. It is a three mana enchantment. We can pay three life to put a plus one plus one counter on a creature. Now with those value and life gain or life manipulation spells out of the way, let's talk about the interaction that we have in this deck. Now let's go over the pieces of interaction in this deck because the interaction in this deck is actually really unique. We are playing some really weird spells that I don't think you would normally see. The first of which is Ashes to Ashes. It's one black black. Ashes to Ashes removes two target non-artifact creatures from the game and deals five damage to you. I think three mana in 
losing five life to exile two non-artifact creatures i think that this card is severely underrated i think that five damage is a lot but we can just immediately recover that and in fact it's actively doing what we want it to do we then have feed the swarm we can destroy target creature or enchantment and opponent controls and we will lose life equal to that permanent converted mana cost we then have pest infestation for xx and the green we destroy up to x target artifacts and or enchantments and create twice x11 black and green pest creature tokens we then have beast within everybody knows what beast within is we can destroy any permanent and its controller is going to make a 3-3 green beast creature token we then have mortality spear which costs two less to cast if we've gained life this turn and it destroys target non-land permanent we then have Putrefy, which at instant speed and for 3 mana can destroy target artifact or creature, and Reckless Spite, also for 3 mana at instant speed, destroys 2 target non-black creatures and we lose 5 life. We then have a couple of board wipes with Deadly Tempest, which destroys all creatures and each player is going to lose life equal to the number of creatures they controlled that were destroyed this way. We then have Essence Pulse, which for 3 and a black we gain 2 life and each creature gets minus x minus x until end of turn, where x is the amount of life that we've gained this turn. And then we have Gaze of Granite, which X black black green destroy each non non permanent with converted mana cost X or less. We're also playing a Noxious Gear Hulk, which for four black black with menace, when it enters the battlefield, we destroy tar another target creature, and if a creature is destroyed this way, we will gain life equal to that creature's toughness. All right, now with the interaction out of the way, we still have just a couple more spells in this deck, and these are spells that help us close out the game, dealing that last little bit of damage or pumping up our board enough for the win. The first card on this list is the Blossoming Bog Beast, four and a green for a, with, for a beast with whenever Blossoming Bog Beasts attacks, we gain two life, then creatures we control gain trample and plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the amount of life we've gained this turn. We then have Sprout Back Trust, which is a 9 mana 9 7 but it costs x generic less mana to cast where x is the amount of life we've gained this turn and at the beginning of our end step if we've gained life this turn we can cast sprout back trudge from our graveyard it is a massive threat that never really goes away especially in this deck so in addition to the sprout back trudge and the blossoming bog beasts as just massive beaters we are playing some spells that kind of get us above our opponent's creatures and be able to hit their face directly the first card is essence harvest so for two and a black and at sorcery speed, target player loses X life and we gain X life for X is the greatest power among creatures we control. And the second card is Rite of Consumption. For one and a black, we have to sacrifice a creature as an additional cost and it's going to deal that much damage to target player. We will gain life equal to the damage dealt this way. Now, both of these cards might not might seem a little innocuous in a lot of decks, but with how big we are going to be making our creatures, it's not unreasonable for these spells to be able to do 20, 25 damage to an opponent out of nowhere. So those two cards are probably some of the best ways we have of closing out games. And with that, this deck tech is coming to a close. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end. The full list will be in the description below. You can check that out to see all the goodies in this deck. And let me know down in the comment section if there are any cards that you would have liked to see in this deck or maybe you would have put in. I know that I, there are a ton of cards that I ended up having to cut because I just had too many cards, one of which being Lifeblood Hydra. I thought that card was super sweet, but didn't quite make the cut because it's a little bit pricey. So I know there are a lot of really cool cards that definitely fit in this deck again i'd like to give a huge thank you to everybody who watches our channel and a super big thank you to all of our subscribers and all of our patrons we really couldn't do this without you guys and if you are interested in becoming a patron you can head on over to patreon.com slash command valley to sign up today you get access to extra channels in our discord server where we're a lot more active on uh, we get to play games with us you get cards you get merch there's a lot of really cool perks that come with being a patron and if you like seeing our content and want to stay up to date on all of our monday deck techs and our monthly gameplay videos you can go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you stay on top of all that content and with that this episode is coming to a close again thank you guys so much and i hope you have a wonderful week